In this video, I'm gonna teach you airspace and how to read VFR sectional charts. And it's gonna be like a bit of a game. Missouri Nation, what is happening? Welcome into the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge, day 23. It's Sunday today, so don't, don't be mad at me for not shaving or anything like that. If it's my, it's Sunday, we're all relaxing here together. So listen, anyways, today I wanna teach you all not only how to read a VFR sectional chart, but more importantly, understand the three-dimensional world we live in and fly in by understanding our airspace. And we're gonna do that through a little bit of gamification. I don't wanna waste any time, I wanna cut right to it. Let's look at our sectional chart. Allow me just three minutes which really means five minutes with me, to give you a brief sectional chart overview, and then we're gonna talk some airspace with it. So let's look here together. Of course, we're looking at our VFR sectional chart using the, using, uh, the iPad here. We'll come into Ocala. What is happening in Ocala, M0A Nation? Well, you know this blue dashed line that you're seeing right around here, that blue dashed line, that's showing us what? That is class D, class delta airspace. It extends from the surface up to 1500 feet, as you can see right there. If we need to grab our frequencies, you see our control tower frequency of 119.25 there, the ATIS frequency of 128.125, um, our airport elevation of 90 feet. We do have pilot controlled lighting and the longest runway there is 7,400 feet. So we can see that. And that's a good example of a nice little class delta. By the way, this yellow, uh, we mistakenly say that shows you the city. While that does show you the city and the population or the populous area of Ocala, it's meant, it's yellow because it's meant at nighttime, that is what the actual pattern of the light, meaning that's what the shape of the lighting would actually look like. It would follow this shape so you could distinguish Ocala in this unique shape compared to everything else out around it here. Compared with something like we look down here, uh, you're looking now like this is actually the villages. Have you ever heard of the villages? It's just blowing up uh, as a retirement community there. So we look at that. We can come over, let's look at Daytona. I know we have a lot of people watching from Daytona. If we look over here at Daytona, a good example of a solid magenta line, which is showing us what? It's showing us a class Charlie. Class Charlie is shown with two rings or really a center area and a shelf as you can see here. Let me zoom in just a little bit further. We can see with our class Charlie in our center area goes from the surface up to 4,000 feet. As opposed to we look out to the left, we can see this shelf goes from 1,200 feet to 4,000 feet. It looks like when we clear it out, you can see it looks like an improper fraction, but that's showing us from 1,200 up to 4,000 feet. Class Charlie airspace. We then, of course, in Florida, we get spoiled. We have lots of Bravos to choose from. You guys want to go to Tampa or you want to go to Orlando? Let's go to Tampa here real quick and we'll show that. So Bravo, of course, shown with the solid blue lines, solid blue lines. And what you'll see, what's so unique, and Charlies and Deltas can do this sometimes too, but you'll see it a, a lot and often with the Bravos is the Bravo can follow a structure. Like you can see the Bravo follows the shoreline of Tampa. Then it picks up on whatever road this is. So we as pilots can have a graphical depiction on the ground. It's Highway 54, as you can see, that draws some of that Bravo. Orlando does the same thing too. You look over here, this road here, uh, it shows all of that there. Actually, it's is that railroad tracks? That looks like it follows? Yeah, that show the actual picture of the Bravo on the ground, if you want to see that. Now, of course, also broken into multiple shelves. From here, you can see we go from the surface up to 10,000 feet. Uh, if we look a little bit further, we can see the other shelves of this as well. And I'll show you something interesting. You can see that here we have an interesting situation. 
This Bravo, because there's Bravo down here on the right side of your screen, goes from 1,200 feet up to 10,000 feet. MacDill Air Force Base, which is a class Delta, shown right here, goes up to minus 1,200 feet. Well, it goes up to minus 1,200, meaning up to but not including 1,200, because if you were at 1,200, you would actually be in the Bravo. However, if you're at 1,199 feet, you're still in McDill's Class D airspace. That's the period where it transitions. Now imagine you're a, a little plane over here just trying to get into, say, like the Peter O'Knight. I think that's Peter O'Knight, right? Um, airport right here off of Davis Island, and you're trying to sneak in there. It makes it a little bit more challenging to sneak in there around McDill, around. It, it's hard to get in and out of there without talking to anybody, to say the least. Underneath the Bravo, through McDill, you can see Albert Witt at a favorite airport of mine, and this Delta of McDill kind of butt up against each other as well. So those are different things to always be watching for. So we covered the main guys. We didn't talk about something called Class Echo airspace. And I'll give you the Inverness here, it gives us a good example of class echo airspace. There's two main types shown, well, three types actually shown here that I wanna demonstrate for you. You see this, what we call a faded magenta circle out around here. This faded magenta circle is a class echo, class E transition area. Meaning inside of this circle, class echo airspace starts at 700 feet. Outside of this circle, assuming it's not any other kind of airspace, it's called domestic en route, and it starts at 1,200 feet. So inside the circle, class echo airspace starts where? 700 feet. Anywhere outside of here, class echo airspace starts where, in Missouri Nation? At 1,200 feet. What's beneath it, by the way? What is, what is beneath um, this? Well. If you're at the surface, the Inverness Airport, you're in class golf airspace until you get to 700 feet. Then you enter into class echo airspace. Why does that matter? What are the VFR visibility and cloud clearance requirements in class G, class golf airspace? It, it's hardly anything. It's a, in some cases, it's a mile clear of clouds. There's other instances for that, but a mile clear of clouds. What are the VFR visibility and cloud clearance requirements in class echo airspace? I need three miles of visibility, 1,000 feet above my clouds, 500 feet below my clouds, and 2,000 feet horizontally from my clouds. If we go back to the sectional chart here, can you buzz around the traffic pattern in one mile clear of clouds in Inverness? The answer is no. We, how do I know that? Well, I can look at my field elevation in Inverness and go 65 feet. Okay, I'm flying in a, basically around 1,100 feet worth of traffic pattern here. I would be in class Echo airspace. I can't be flying around uh, in one mile clear of clouds. I need at least three 152. Three miles of visibility, a thousand feet above my clouds, 500 feet below my clouds, 2,000 feet horizontally from my clouds to even operate in the traffic pattern. Does that make sense for everybody? That is why we have these class echo transition areas. Class echo transition area. Odd shaped class echo transition area here. So let's play a game real quick. We're going to play a game. CFIs, practice this with your, with your students. Students, learners, practice this on your own with your CFIs or by yourself with your buddies, whatever you want. We're going to play the rocket ship game here. Let's go ahead and let's blast off in our rocket ship from right here. X marks the spot. We're going to blast off from right there in our rocket ship. I know. Listen, I wanted to go to space camp too. My parents wouldn't send me. This is your opportunity to be an astronaut. You ready? So let's blast off right here from our rocket ship. The moment we leave the ground, M0 Nation, what airspace are you in? Again, you can be watching this years down the line. Say it to yourself. The moment you blast off, what airspace are you in? You're in class D airspace. Why? I got a dashed, a dashed blue line here. That dashed blue line is class D airspace. Okay, my launch is successful, I continue on. I'm in class D airspace until when? Well, until 1500 feet. This is just a cylinder that goes up to 1500 feet. Above 1500 feet, at 1501 feet, what airspace do I enter in? I enter into class E, class echo airspace, why? 
while I'm within this class echo transition area here. In my rocket ship, I continue in class echo airspace until when? I'm in class echo airspace all the way up to 17,999 feet because at 18,000 feet, I enter into class A airspace. Class A airspace, just for a fun fact, continues up to when? 60,000 feet. After that, the FAA said, hey, you know, NASA, Elon Musk, you, Richard Branson, you guys control that. You're in charge of that. Goes back to class echo airspace again after that. 60,000 feet. Not something you have to worry about. This is your fun fact for the day. Let's do another one here together. All right, let's go. Let's make it a little more difficult. I'm going to blast off. You are now a, uh, a rocket ship just like Elon Musk would want, blasting off from the water this time, from Yankee Lake, I think it looks like it's called. We're taking off from Yankee Lake. Let me zoom out so you can see everything a little bit better here. We're blasting off from Yankee Lake. The moment you, this is a tough one. Let me even look at it with you here. I didn't pre-plan this. We're doing this together. The moment you take off from Yankee Lake, what airspace are you in? I, I'm going to say, and I, you are in class Gulf airspace. You take off from Yankee Lake. You are in class G. You can look at this. You got all this craziness around you. You take off in class Gulf airspace, M. Zuri Nation. You take off in class Gulf airspace. You blast straight on off until when? Until when? Well, look at this with me. This is your class echo transition area, but you're on the wrong side of it, right? That's around Sanford. This class echo transition area is over here. I believe you're in domestic and route. I don't see anything that says otherwise. I believe at 1,200 feet, because it's domestic and route, because you are not inside of this circle here, right? Inside's over, over here. You're outside of it. Let me, let me clear some of these crazinesses out. Whoops. I'll bring my launch pad back. At 1,200 feet, you enter into class echo airspace. You're only there for just a second because as soon as you kiss 1,300 feet, you're in the class Charlie airspace. You remain in that class Charlie airspace until T. Oh, T, that doesn't make any sense. What do you mean until T? Well, its top is the bottom of the Bravo. So let's go back here for a second. What Bravo shelf am I in? I believe I fall into this Bravo shelf right here that you can see where its bottom is three, I made a bad circle there, sorry, but you see it is 3,000 feet. So from 1,300 to 2,999 feet, I'm in class Charlie airspace. Then at 3,000 feet, you better hear those magic words, rocket ship 23 Mike Zulu, you're cleared into Orlando's class Bravo airspace because at 3,000 feet, you enter into class Bravo airspace. You remain in that class Bravo airspace until when? Until 10,000 feet. At 10,001, you enter into what airspace? Right back into class echo airspace. You remain in that class echo airspace all the way up to what? 17,999 because at 18,000 feet, you enter into the flight levels. Welcome to class A airspace. You keep blasting on and up. You say hi to Elon Musk and Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos. When you get to 60,000 feet, you're back in class E, class echo airspace. Was that a little crazy? It's called the rocket ship game. And I used to do it with all my students. I would literally open up, well, you know, back in the olden days, we had these things. Maybe you've heard of them. They're called sectional charts. And they used to print them on paper. Well, they still do. I would take out a sectional chart in front of a big table and I would make my student or myself just put my finger anywhere on that chart and say, that's our launch pad. Take me through all the airspace. That's my launch pad. Take me through all the airspace. You want to practice your sectional charts. You want to practice your airspace. You want a way to visualize three-dimensional airspace. Start playing the rocket ship game. It's not only going to make you better on your check ride. It's going to make you safe out there in the real world. Because when you're hustling up to that airspace and you wonder, am I going to clear it in time? Do I need to talk to somebody? What are my options? You're going to know, how do I fit in this 3D world I'm flying in? That last one I picked, again, I didn't rehearse this. This last one I picked, well, that was a hard one. I apologize for that, but it's also very real world to have airspace on airspace on airspace. So listen, 
I want to read your comments. I read every single one of your comments. First off, who is 23 for 23? Congratulations on that. Tomorrow, spoiler alert, we're going to do the same thing, but with an IFR low and root chart. Well, we'll go over some more symbology and everything else on that as well. Can't wait to read your comments down below this video. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see ya. So I know you're loving the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge, but did you know I'm live on Facebook every Saturday with a little show we call In Flight Coffee. Look at that beautiful coffee mug right there. Every Saturday on Facebook at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I make a cup of coffee and then just hang out with you all, drink that coffee and talk aviation with you for about an hour. It's only on Facebook. Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time, check it out. It's called In Flight Coffee on the main M0A Facebook page. Maybe I'll see you there this Saturday.